All right, let's take a look at problem 12. So in problem 12, we have an insulated tank that is divided into two parts. So two equal parts. Both halves contain the same ideal gas, but one is at 300 Kelvin in two bars, while the other is at 400 Kelvin in one bar. The partition is suddenly removed and the system is allowed to reach equilibrium. What is the temperature and pressure when equilibrium has been established? told that the heat capacities of the ideal gas may be assumed to be constant in the temperature range of this problem. All right, awesome. So let me start by drawing some pictures to try and figure out what exactly we have going on here. And so I have some tank that initially has a divide in it. Okay, and I'm gonna label my two halves. I'm gonna label one, one, and the other half, two. Now on the left-hand side, the side one, we're told that we have a temperature of 300 Kelvin and a pressure of two bars. On the right-hand side, I have a temperature of 400 Kelvin and a pressure of one bar. So first I need to define my system, all right? So I'm going to define my system. Actually, let me highlight it. Is I'm gonna define my system as this entire composite system. So I'm gonna take this entire container to be my system, all right? So I'm gonna try and highlight what I mean, all right? So I'm taking this entire composite system or this entire container containing both halves to be my system. And one reason for doing that is, is first, I'm told that the tank is insulated. Oh, let me get back to black. So the tank is insulated. So what I'm going to take that to mean is since I'm taking this entire tank to correspond to my system, right, that there's going to be no heat exchange between my system and surroundings. So Q is going to be equal to zero. The other thing I'm going to assume is that we're not told anything about shaft work. And... I'm going to assume that the tank is rigid because there's nothing in here that suggests otherwise so that we could take W also to be equal to zero, that there's going to be no work exchange between my system and surroundings. Okay. Um, one more thing I want to label in here before I forget is, you know, we've, we've, these are ideal gases, right? So this is going to be my, you know, system. And let me call this initial system A. We're told it's divided into two equal parts. Okay, so... This left-hand side, right, I'll write some V1 total. And on the right-hand side, I'll have some V2 total, which is equal to V1 total. Okay, so by equal parts, I'm going to take it to be that the volume of those two sides are the same. Okay, cool. Uh, so that's what we have initially. And then I remove the partition. And my system's allowed to equilibrate. So I'm going to have the same container, right? And so my system is going to be exactly the same because I define my system as that entire container. I'm going to call this final system B. And what I need to calculate is TB and PB. Okay, cool. And I believe that's all the information that we have. Right? And again, we're, we're dealing with ideal gases uh, and heat capacity is constant. All right, so what do I have to work with? Well, if I start with my first law energy balance, okay, I have the delta U is equal to Q plus W, okay, where we're assuming the Q and W are both zero. So we end up with delta U, all right, is equal to all right, zero, okay. So our first law balance reduces to delta U is equal to zero. So therefore, we have that UA is equal to UB. All right, so now let's take this in parts, okay? UA is the internal energy of my starting system. And so UA, so if I take this to be my molar internal energy, all right, is gonna be equal to, I'll write it as X1, all right, the mole fraction in my system you know, so I'm going to have some total number of moles in my system. 
um, and I'll have some moles in you know, the left side and some moles on the right side. So x1 is the fraction of moles, the mole fraction in my system, due to the left side, times u1, the internal energy of the left side, plus x2, u2. Cool. Okay, where? Uh, I can leave them as... Uh, I could leave them as x1 and x2, but let me go ahead and substitute in what is x1. x1 is going to correspond to n1 divided by n1 plus n2 times u1 plus n1 over n1 plus n2 times u2. All right, so that's ua. Now, before I proceed um, and I you know, work this in with ub, I want to again emphasize that we're dealing with an ideal gas. So as we found in, out in the chapter, is for an ideal gas, internal energy is only a function of temperature. So internal energy of an ideal gas is independent of pressure. It's only a function of temperature. And so we'll be able to calculate changes in U using, since we're assuming CV is constant here, right? Delta U is just going to be a CV delta T, right? So, you know, delta U is integral of CV dT, but if CV is constant, Right, it's just CV delta T. All right, so I have my equation for UA. Okay, so let me plug that in now to our first law balance here. Okay, and we'll we'll get this to simplify here in a second. So I'm going to have that UA is equal to UB, where UA is equal to N1 divided by N1 plus N2 times U1 plus n1 over n1 plus n2 times u2, and that's equal to ub. All right, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to multiply through by n1 plus n2. Now, you know, keep in mind, n1 plus n2 is just, you know, n, right? The total number of moles in my final system is equal to the total number of moles I have in my initial system. Right. N is just N1 plus N2. Okay, and so when I multiply through, essentially what that gives me all right, is the equivalence of just working with X sense of internal energies. All right, so, oh, and so here, this shouldn't be, so I have a typo. This shouldn't be N1, this should be N2. My apologies. Right, it's really like working on the whiteboard in class where I can really make mistakes, right? But hopefully, oh, but now I don't have you to catch them, right? But hopefully I'll, I'll catch them for you. So that's N2, U2, and that'll be equal to N1 plus N2 times UB, okay? Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute and then collect terms, okay? Collect terms in terms of uh, moles of, you know, N1 and moles N2. Okay. Now the ideal gas is, you know, indistinguishable, right? Because we're told we have the same ideal g gas on the left and right. N1 and N2 still correspond, though, to the moles that were originally on the left, the moles that were originally on the right. N1 plus N2 is the sum, the total, um, and that'll be the total number of moles we have in that homogeneous system at the end. Okay. Um, but nonetheless, for for calculation convenience. So N1 U1 plus N2 U2 is equal to N1 UB plus N2 UB. All right, so I am going to group in terms of moles of each species. So on the left, I'm going to have N1 U1. Okay, then I'll bring this term over. Minus UB is equal to, on the right-hand side, N2, and then... Let me get UB minus U2. Okay. Now, why do I want to do this? All right. Well, again, right, we have the same ideal gas throughout. And so what I have here is a change in internal energy, all right, of so the change of molar internal energy between my ideal gas um, and going from state B to state one and in state two to state B. And so this, all right, I can calculate via heat capacity. All right. So N1, OK, 
Okay, and then u1 minus ub. So again, okay, to get delta u, right, this would ide ideally be integral from b to 1 cv dt, but we're assuming that cv is constant, right? So cv just comes out, and I get cv, oops, cv, and then it would be t1 minus tb, right? And I could do something similar or do the exact same thing up here. All right, so what I get is N1 times CV T1 minus TB is equal to N2 CV and then final minus initial TB minus T2. Okay, and so in doing this, right, my CV terms cancel. Because right, it's the same ideal gas, and we're told to assume that the heat capacity is constant right, in the problem. So CV cancels, and now I have N1 times T1 minus TB is equal to N2 TB minus T2. All right, so I know T1 and T2, so let me see now if I can solve this for TB. So let me distribute again. Right, maybe I could have done this a little more efficiently, but, but that's okay. I should note that when I'm solving these problems, this is me genuinely solving these problems as if we were in class. This is fun. This is my, uh, my you know, evening pleasure, right? Uh, working out some thermal problems. So let me now um, solve for T. So let's see. On the left-hand side, I'll have N1 T1 minus N2 T2. And on the right, I'll collect my TB terms. So I'm going to write this as TB. Um, and then it's N2 plus N1. Okay, so this works out because then TB is equal to N1 over N1 plus N2 T1. minus N2 over N1 plus N2 T2. Does that, did I calculate that correctly? Does that make sense? So N2 TB and then be a plus N1 TB. So that's right. Oh, nope, over here, I have a sign error. This should be a plus, because I'm bringing this over to the left-hand side. So that should be a plus, and this should be plus. Hey, so that's kind of cool. TB is nothing more than the molar average of the temperature in my starting left and right side, right? That, that That's really cool, right? So TB is nothing more than X1, T1, plus X2, T2. Right, that that's really cool. So the temperature of my final system, all right, we just showed from the first law of balance, is nothing more than the molar average temperature of my two starting halves. That that that's really cool. <laughs> um, so all right, so we know T1 and T2, but I need to calculate um, X1 and X2. Okay, and I can do that via um, ideal gas. Um, so ideal gas equation of state. So namely. Right, I'll write it as PI. I'll write it in its x sense of 4. Um, PV, and so now this would be V total, would be you know, NI times R times TI. Okay. So NI would be equal to PI VI total divided by R TI. All right, so if I wanted to calculate X1, so X1 is N1 divided by N1 plus N2. So that'll be equal to P1 V1 total divided by RT1 divided by P1 V1 total divided by RT1 plus P2 V2 total divided by RT2. 
All right, now R is my molar gas constant. That's constant. I can kill it. Um, and then for this problem, since the two halves were the same, all right, V1 total is equal to V2 total. Right? So I can cancel this as well. So I end up with X1 is equal to P1 over T1 divided by P1 over T1 plus P2 over T2. All right, so let's jump over to MATLAB and let's calculate X1. I'm going to go back up here. Um, so what's important, um, I'm going to mention units here real quick. All right, so ideal gas equation of state. Okay, remember, I need to use absolute temperature. All right, so temperature is in Kelvin already. That's great. Uh, pressure, right? So now I'm not going to worry about converting pressure. Um, so pressure before I'd always convert to Pascals just to make sure the units work out right. But here, all right, um, the units of pressure will, will cancel out, right? As long as my unit of pressure is consistent throughout, I'm, I'm good. All right, temperature, I need to use absolute temperature units. That's why I'm using Kelvin. Right, I did not say degree C. Pressure, this is an absolute pressure. Um, before, it's just a matter of making sure the units were, were consistent. All right, so let's create a script, and I'm just going to type all these up. So we had P1. Oh, P1 is two bars. Uh, T1 was 300 Kelvin. Okay, P2 was one bar. T2 is 400 Kelvin. So then X1 is equal to P1 divided by T1 divided by, and so let me get the whole denominator in parentheses, P1 divided by T1 plus P2 divided by T2. Okay, and then X2 would just be equal to 1 minus X1. Okay, so let me just run it just so I can write down their value in my written work. Okay, so just so I can write it down. So X1 0 0.7273 X1 is 0 0.727273. Right, and then X2 would be equal to 0 0.2727. All right, so then to solve for TB, TB is just the molar average of T1 and T2. So computing then, okay, we get TB is equal to X1 times T1 plus X2 times T2. I mean, it makes sense, but, you know, it's really cool. It's <laughs> the final temperature of that mixture is just a molar average of the initial temperature in those two halves. All right, that's, that's really cool. Okay, at least, at least to me, it's really cool. 327.2727 Kelvin. So my final temperature is 327.2727 Kelvin. Okay, again, it's just the molar average of those two temperatures I started with. Um, but they don't want just the temperature. They want the pressure. All right, so how am I going to get the pressure? Well, to get the pressure, I should be able to use my ideal gas equation of state. Okay, so let's write it down, and then let's see if we have everything that we would need um, to compute it. Um, so namely, I will have, so PV, well, in its molar form, PV equals um, NRT. Okay, but let's write it as PB, and then I'm going to write this as uh, PB times VB total is equal to, you know, N, this is, you know, N1 plus N2 times R times TB, okay? Now, before we proceed, let's let's just kind of see if we can 
if we can actually do this. All right, so I know VB, okay, because VB is just V1 total plus V2 total. I know R, TB I just calculated. Okay, I don't know exactly N1 plus N2, right? I know X1 and I know X2, right? And the mole fraction. But I don't know the sum of N1 and S2, N1 and N2. So let's think here for a second. Let's see if I'm missing something. So I need to use ideal gas equation state. In my initial state, I know temperature and pressure and the total volume are equal. Ah, well, so what I, I think we can... Oh, hold on, i got to think on this one for a second. I'm, I'm stumped. So the first thought that's coming to my mind is we can define a basis, right? So when I look at what I'm given, right? So initially I know T1 and P1. I'm not told what the volume of either side is, nor am I told how many moles I have in either side. So what, I, what we need to do is we're going to need to take a basis, okay? So we have TB, okay, in order to calculate the final pressure, we're going to need to assume a basis, okay. And, you know, what I mean by this is we know temperature and pressure, okay, but we don't know yeah, but we don't know, so, you know, from here, right, I could, I know T1 and P1, so I could solve for the molar volume in my left side and right hand side, right? PV equals RT. And so, you know, my system's fully specified. I could calculate molar volume, okay? But the issue though is now when I get to the right hand side, I the molar volume isn't, well actually, yeah, it's not the molar volume that's constant, right? The total number of moles is constant. The total volume is constant. Ah, but I can get it. You're right. Okay. I take it back. So we, we can get this. We've got this. So the issue is, let's go back to our left-hand side. So in the left-hand side, I have P, P1, V1 equals R, T1. Okay. Where I know P1, I know R, and I know T1. So V1 is equal to R, T1 over P1. Okay, got it. I can do the same thing for side 2. For side 2, I have P2 V2 is equal to R T2. So V2 then would be R T2 over P2. All right, so just like we've done before um, when we've had problems involving the steam tables, is if I want to calculate the molar volume of state A, okay, just like I did with internal energy, right? We did the same thing with internal energy up here, right? UA was X1, U1 plus X2, U2. So I can do the same thing here, where VA would be X1, V1 plus X2, V2, okay, where now I, I know, you know, what X1 and X2 is, okay. Now our tank is rigid, right, so I'd written down before that, you know, VB total was equal to VA total, which is equal to V1 total plus V2 total, Okay, where V1 total and V2 total are, are the same. Okay, so that's what I'd written down before, but, you know, not only is the total volume the same, but since we're taking the system, 
to be, you know, our composite system, the volume's the same and the total number of moles are the same. All right, so VA, all right, is going to be equal to VB. Okay. Why? Because the total volume's the same um, and also the total number of moles in that total system is the same. Okay. Where I know X1, I know V1, I know X2, and I know V2. So now if I go back to system B and I write my ideal gas equation state on my molar basis, I have PB and VB equals RTB. Okay, so now I solve for PB because R is a constant. I have just calculated TB and now VB, all right, I can calculate because that's just going to be equal to x1 v1 plus x2 v2. All right, now let's expand this out too. All right, we've got this now. So then PB is equal to RTB. I'm going to try and cancel some more terms. So I'll keep um, x1 and x2 as they are because we, we've calculated those. But what I want to do is I want to plug in um, for V. So V is R T1 over P1. So this will be, X, I'll write, just write it as X1. But then I'm going to write R T1 over P1 plus X2. That'll be R T2 over P2. This way I can kill my molar gas constant. Oh, not P. Kill my molar gas constant. Yeah, kill my molar gas constant, and this way I don't have to worry about units. So P, B will be equal to TB divided by, now I have X1, T1 over P1 plus X2, T2 over P2. All right, and just to bring it full circle, right, because, again, this is pretty cool, is keep in mind when we calculated TB, TB was just the molar average of T1 and T2. All right, where do I have it? Yeah, so just, just to bring it full circle, because uh, this looks pretty cool. All right, TB was X1, T1, plus X2, T2. All right, now that's divided by x1, t1 over p1, plus x2, t2 over p2. All right. Just kind of cool, all right, the way the equation looks. So let's go ahead and compute it. All right, and by killing r, I'm not going to worry about units now. Temperature, I'll just, temperature has to be an absolute unit, so I'll use Kelvin. But then pressure, I'll just keep in um, bar because the units will work out, right? my units of temperature will, will cancel, and so I'll just be left with units of pressure. So let's do it. So then to get PB, so PB was equal to TB divided by, so then I had X1 times, so X1 times T1 divided by P1 plus X2 times T2 over P2. So my pressure is 1.5 bars. Okay. So my final pressure is 1.5 bars. Okay. Cool. So done. All right. So I apologize. I had to think for a little bit on this last one. And again, it's when I wrote down my extensive um, form of the ideal gas equation of state. So I was thinking in terms of V totals because we said equal parts, right? So V1 total equals V2 total, and then my total volume would be the sum of those both. But since it's rigid, well, since, since total volume is constant and it's closed, so the number of moles is constant, um, the molar volume that we would start with, right, of that composite system would be the same as that final system. And so I could compute that, you know, initial molar volume, and so I was was good to go. I, I didn't need to assume a basis. All right, that was a, a fun one. Hope you hope you enjoy it too.
We'll see you in the next problem.